have a very sad <laughs> cheesecake meal going on here. This cheesecake looks like trash. Yes, I'm aware of this. Sorry. I'm, it's my fault. Hey, you did make something to go on top though, so hopefully that saves it. I hope so. Um, yeah, I just wasn't. It's store bought, it. and it's a travesty because she makes an awesome cheesecake. I do make an awesome cheesecake, but I didn't have time, and I really didn't want to because it takes like 18 hours to make a decent cheesecake. <laughs> Life happens. Yeah, it does. Go to bed. Those are my children. Okay. So the reason why we're having um, cheesecake tonight is because I just got back from the great state of New York um, and was out on Long Island. Um, I actually had to go up there for a funeral. Um, it's a, kind of my childhood place out there. But anyways, um, so our story takes place in Long Island mm -hmm. and it is about the unidentified Long Island serial killer. Um, so we ready to dive into it? Yes. Okay. So these kind of cases, um, are a lot more unsettling to me mm -hmm. than even the ones that have some horrible shit going yes. on in it. Simply because we don't know if this is a male, a female. We don't know what they look like. We don't know anything about this killer. And... It's, it's unnerving it is to unnerving. know that there is somebody mm -hmm. still out there that is just... Yeah. Can we hold on for just yes. a second? <laughs> <laughs> so, they yes, I agree that they are 100% unnerving because yeah. this guy is unidentified, so he could still be out there mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, doing these terrible things, but could be in another state. And we'll talk about some stuff in the case later that leads me to believe that this person is not originally from New York. Um, yeah, but is familiar with New York. So like, maybe he works there. Maybe he works there or maybe he lives there now, like moved there, you know, after he, yeah, like left killed in other states. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay. So, um, just a little bit about what we do know about this Long Island serial killer. So, um, if you haven't heard that name, he's also, he or she is also referred to as the Gilgo Beach killer or the Craigslist Ripper. Um, he is suspected of killing between 10 and 16 women over a period of almost 20 years. Yeah. All of these women were, um, either sex workers or, um, like high end escort. Well, I don't, I, I don't want to say high end because I don't, I don't feel that that is the case no. with these women. Um, but they did advertise their services, um, as an escort and they did it on Craigslist. Um, all of the victims were found um, along the Ocean Parkway near Gilgo Beach um, and Oak Beach in Suffolk County and Jones Beach State Park in Nassau County, which is actually where I was mm -hmm. this past week. The victims were initially found um, in December of 2010, and it kind of, it was an accidental finding. Um, and I'll explain more about that now because our story, um, nobody really knew that there was even a serial killer going on yeah. um, until this girl, her name is Shannon Gilbert, went missing in May of 2010. Um, she, the Suffolk County Police received a missing persons report from Shannon, uh, for Shannon Gilbert. Um, the police, of course, didn't really take it seriously because, um, like they do with all of these cases, they're uh -huh. sex workers, and so they're um, pushed to the back burner. They are pushed to the back burner in a lot of cases. So um, Shannon had been missing for two days when um, they f they filed a missing persons report. She was 24 years old. She worked as a sex worker, like I already said. And her case is very interesting because there was a possibility of her getting help mm -hmm. and receiving help, but um, she didn't take it. So she was last seen 
running along the road on Oak in the Oak Beach area, which I guess is kind of like a gated community type mm -hmm. area. And the night that she disappeared, she was working at an escort. Um, and she had been dropped off at this client's house. Now, I don't believe that they had met before. I believe that this was a new client for her. Uh -huh. First timer. Um, but she did have a driver. Yeah. So that's what kind of made me thought higher end escorts. Because who has a driver? Um, somebody that's probably been mugged a few times or uh, like okay. stiffed on their payment. Mm, okay. Um, so her driver's name was Michael Pack. Um, you saw her pictures, right? Yes, I did. Okay, so. Yes, I know. I don't believe that she was high end. <laughs> <laughs> we're not victim shaming here. No, we're not. Um, anyways, so at about um, 4.50 in the morning, um, the night that she disappeared, she actually ran out of the client's house, um, was absolutely hysterical, ran from Michael Pack, ran down the road, and she called 911, and she said, there's someone after me, they are going to kill me. And that 911 call lasted approximately like 20 to 23 minutes uh -huh. long. Um, the issue was she, I don't think she really knew where she was and they couldn't pinpoint her. Like right. this was back before they were able to really, I guess, do GPS, do and, GPS stuff. and stuff like that. And so, I mean, obviously, and she's on a cell phone too. So, and if she's running, um, you know, they're not able to really track where she is. Mm -hmm. So she ran to the house, she ran to a house and banged on the door and um, the guy opened the door and Shannon ran in and again she said, help me, they're trying to kill me. The key word here is they, mm -hmm. um, which I will go into my theory <laughs> once okay. I go through the suspects. Okay. Um, he kept asking her what is wrong what is wrong and she's just like call 911 they're after me they're after me and then like he goes to call 911 and she's just like staring at him like a deer in the headlights like what are you doing what are you talking about and then immediately ran out of the house and down the street mm -hmm. um and then that was the last that he heard from her um, didn't know who she was at the time. And then, so police, that when the when he called in, the police were able to put two and two together and realize that this was the girl, and so that now they have a location. But mm -hmm. despite their efforts of coming out and searching the area, they could not find Shannon Gilbert at all. Her body um, was actually not discovered until December of 2011. Mm -hmm. um, and there were an independent autopsy had been done because she was found like in this marshy area and it was suspected that she had died um from drowning mm -hmm. okay <laughs> but then i guess there was an independent autopsy in 2016 that actually identified some um consistencies with homicidal strangulation yeah. Um, which I believe, you know, if you're really into true crime and know it, uh, you know that that probably means that the hyoid bone was broken. Yes. If you don't know what the hyoid bone is, it's a bone in your neck that breaks when, when, you're, when you're being choked. <laughs> so in December of 2010, so this is a year before Shannon was found, um, while out on a training exercise with, a, with his canine, partner I'm assuming mm -hmm. uh, a police officer discovered the skeletal remains of a female in a burlap bag uh, on I, I guess a beach mm -hmm. it was like on the beach like I, I don't think on Gilgo. the boardwalk but no like it was like a not a not deserted but a secluded mm -hmm. area that's not easy to get to that's not yeah. um like that's not where people go yeah. to hang out on the beach. So, uh, that female victim had been strangled and put in a burlap bag. And, uh, that led to a police search of the rest of the area where three more bodies were found. All in burlap, burlap sacks, all had been strangled. Um, all of them turned out to be women who were missing sex workers, uh, and they had all advertised their services on Craigslist, same as Shannon. 
<clears throat> so the body is discovered in December of 2010. I'm going to read the names to you. Uh, Maureen Brainard Barnes, who was a 25-year-old single mother who had advertised her services online, was last seen on July 9th of 2007, uh, saying that she was going to spend the day in New York City. Um, Melissa Bartholomew? Sure. Barth Bartholomew? Bartholomew? Mm-hmm. Uh, 24 year old went missing July 10th of 2009. Uh, Megan Waterman, a 22 year old who went missing on June 6th, 2010. So these are pretty close together, mm -hmm. these victims. Mm -hmm. um, Amberlyn Costello, a 27 year old who went missing on September 2nd of 2010. Um, now, uh, Amber was a heroin user that was in and out of the escort services. She had quit for a while, ended up coming back because she had a mm -hmm. drug habit that she needed to feed. Okay. Um, according to her roommate, the night that she went missing, she was meeting to, she was planning on meeting a client who was willing to pay her $1,500 for a night which was like three times the amount that she normally asked for. Mm -hmm. So she took that. Um, now the body is discovered in 2011. We already discussed Shannon was discovered in 2011. Mm -hmm. um, but in, uh, in 2011, this, all these bodies were found two miles east of the ones that were found in December of 2010. Yeah, sorry, I think I wrote down the wrong date. Oh, where? Uh, um, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. I'm interrupting. Um, in March, two women, a unidentified man, and a toddler were all found. Pretty much in, like, all the other mm -hmm. bodies were found. Which, like, so I'm not even 100% sure that the man and, and the, the toddler, toddler were, re like, were part of the, yeah. like, part of the uh, Lisk killer. But it's like, this Gilgo Beach area is yeah. just, like, a dumping ground right, for bodies. Right, just bodies. Like, you kill somebody and you just go to Gilgo Beach and you right. drop it. I don't think they were a part of the list killers either, but all these other ones, they all mm -hmm. fit the profile of what yeah. the, the killer was looking for. They were all small, petite escorts. They mm -hmm. all looked similar. Mm -hmm. um, I, he definitely, or he or she definitely had a type. And I just don't feel like they, it's a he. We can say it's yeah, a he. it's a he. It's a he. I'm gonna. These are sex-driven crimes. It, yeah, it's it's a man. It, yes. <laughs> I'm with, yeah. I, yes. We'll disagree on that. If anybody disagrees with us, fine. whatever. Fuck you. We don't care. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. We do care. <laughs> Gosh, Brittany. <laughs> uh, so anyway, I don't believe that those two were involved with it. I just think that that, like you said, I think that area was just a bad area. It was deserted, mm -hmm. secluded. People yeah. just opportunity. Yep. Uh, let's see. Uh, a skull and a partial set of remains were found in April. Uh, Jessica Taylor, a 20-year-old 20, 20 who went missing in July of 2003. So this is um, one of the older cases like these bodies that we're talking about now these were murdered before the bodies that were discovered in 2010 yep. um so that just goes to show you that this killer has a wide range of years mm -hmm. that he's killing in it's not just a couple years he it, it's decades yeah. uh let's see jessica taylor's naked and dismembered torso was found July 26th of 2003, um, and I guess it was her head and hands that had been discovered mm -hmm. in 2011. Yeah. Um, her hands, her, she had a tattoo on her back that had just been like... Completely mutilated. Mutilated. You couldn't even tell what it was anymore. Yeah. Um, let's see. Jessica was actually not from the area. She was just there working. She was originally from D.C., so she was a sex mm -hmm. worker in Manhattan and in D.C. Mm -hmm. um, Valerie Mack, whose torso was found in November of 2000, she was just found recently, right? In like 2017? Mm. No, I don't think no? so. No, They just found 
Or oh wait, no, they found her. Then they figured out who she, she was. was. Yes. in 2017. Mm -hmm. Yes. So she was unidentified in 2011 mm -hmm. when they found her, and they finally discovered who she was right. in 2017. Mm -hmm. Um, so her remains had been wrapped in garbage bags instead of the burlap sack mm -hmm. and had been dumped in the woods. Uh, her right foot had been cut off above the ankle, possibly to conceal another tattoo. So before we start talking about the sus suspects, I'm going to just put this out here and say that I feel like it's somebody in police enforcement or somebody that well, knows... <laughs> How to cover things up. Yeah. This, this, the serial, serial killer was hidden for a long time, you guys, and. Yeah. So they, he's got to work in they some to, form of law enforcement. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's interesting that you say that because um, I'm going to jump into the suspects. And the first one that we have listed off here, his name is James Burke. And he was actually the Suffolk County Police Chief. Excuse me. However, he got fired from his job mm -hmm. because it really looked like he was blocking an FBI probe. Now, from what I understood is that the FBI wasn't taking over the case mm -hmm. or wanting to take over the case. I think that they had asked permission to like come in and offer some help, um, yeah. some expertise. They're, and they're FBI for a reason. Um, and this James Burke is like, no, that's not, that's not happening. And yeah. so I guess, and then also there was, um, like, it, it was well known that he liked the escorts. He uh -huh. liked the call girls. Um, and there was another escort um, who actually identified Burke as being a man that she saw at uh, one of these little sex parties. Mm -hmm. And at that party, he actually grabbed a woman by the hair and pulled her down. But also at the same time, the woman kind of acted like it was a joke type situation. Uh -huh. I don't know, but he apparently wanted to have like rough, brutal sex with the call girls. Mm. Um, and uh, he had actually gotten arrested um, later, um, like in 2014 or something, um, for beating somebody up and got sentenced to, I don't know, like 40 months in prison or something mm -hmm. like that. And um, so that was, that was his story. Like, so if it was him, then I feel like, I think he's. I think he is tied to it. I don't yeah, think. One hundred percent. I don't think it was him that actually did the killings. I think that there's more than one person involved. Yeah, I agree. So, moving on. So we go on to our next suspect, who is John Bitroff. 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 <laughs> okay. He is a convicted murderer who murdered two other sex workers and was suspected of killing a third. Um, there were similarities between his actual murder victims mm -hmm. and the Gilgo Beach victims. Um, he was arrested in 2014 after his DNA was linked to um, bodies that were found in 1993 and 1994. So that's how he got arrested and then spent time in jail, which doesn't, he's a convicted murderer. I mean, if he were already got out in the 2000s, you know what I mean? Like if he killed somebody in 2003. Mm -hmm. But was he incarcerated in 1996? Yeah. Because they were talking about one of the victims possibly dying in 1996. Yeah, but then that doesn't tie him to the murders after in 2010. I don't think it was him. I don't think it was him either. Okay, we're just going to give you that right now. I don't think it was him. <laughs> um, however, he lived only three miles from where Jessica Taylor's torso had been found. Um, and one of his victims from 1993, her name was Rita, her daughter was reportedly best friends with Melissa Bartholomew, mm -hmm. which is one of the Gilgo Beach victims. Right. So that's how they are kind of tied together. 
Joseph Brewer um, was the, one of the last people to see Shannon Gilbert alive. Um, he was the client that had hired Shannon mm -hmm. for the night, which I would be looking into him hard as fuck. Like seriously, yeah. you're this kinky weirdo who yeah. lives in a gated community, probably sent the wife and kids out for a weekend, and you thought you'd get your kink on by having one of these little parties. Mm -hmm. Anyways. I'm pretty sure it's this guy. Um, so, according to him, and he, I'm assuming that because he lives in a gated community, he has to be of some money. Yeah. And so, according to him, shortly after Shannon arrived, she started acting erratically and ran out of the house. So, acting erratically. Um, so, the police just kind of took his word for it and was just like, okay, yeah. you know. There's no hard evidence. She's here. an escort. She's it's, an escort. It has to be so her fault. It, 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 she's just a big slut. Yeah. So, okay. So then you have Dr. Peter Hackett, which this guy, I don't know if you saw a video of him or not, but man, he's a, oh, yeah. he's a douche about the <laughs> defibrillator. Yeah, <laughs> he's got him and he's like, you can I'm gonna, tell it's I'm gonna, so fake. I, I'm going to see if I can get a clip of it because it is beyond fake. It is the worst That's acting. the most dramatic thing I've ever seen a yeah, man do. To get out of, a, like, questioning yes. reporters. Not even police yes. reporters. Anyways. Yes. So he is a neighbor to Joseph Brewer. And after Shannon went missing or two days after Shannon went missing, he calls Shannon's mother mm -hmm. and says he ran a home for wayward girls and that's where Shannon was. Which is just ridiculous. Because, why, but why would you call twice? Right. So then he lies. Oh, I'm sorry. This is your part, isn't it? No, you're doing this. Oh, am I? I think you should do this one too because it's the last suspect. Okay, that's fine. Um, okay, so I just didn't highlight it on mine. Um, so three days after he, after that, he called the mother again, mm -hmm. but then he denied having any contact yeah. with her daughter. So this girl goes missing. She, her body hasn't even been found yet, but he calls and he says that she is at his house because mm -hmm. he ran, or he, she was with him because he ran a, a home for wayward girls and then all of a sudden, almost two years or almost two years later, her body is found. Yep. Sounds like a bunch of bullshit to me. It sounds like a bunch of bullshit to me. So my thought is that the wives went away mm -hmm. for the weekend, mm -hmm. and these two men wanted to have a little fun, so they thought they would hire an escort. Yep. And things probably got carried away. Yep. They probably have a friend in law enforcement whose name is James Burke. <laughs> yep. And they were like, oh, shit, man, what do we do? We'll pay you. And because, you know, they have lots of money. They're doctors or whatever, lawyers, business executives. <laughs> so are you also thinking that they killed the rest of them too or just Shannon? I think maybe, yeah, they did. Yeah. If it was like a little man's club thing they were yeah. having. Yeah. Like, uh, like in, uh, what is it, in Bates Motel? Oh, yeah. Remember? Mm -hmm. Those little, those escorts, those were high-end yeah. escorts, though. Yeah. yeah. So, I don't mm -hmm. know. It's a good theory. Yeah. All right, and then so the last, um, the last suspect that we have, which there's not any, hardly any information on him, is James Bissett. He owned a local nursery who also... <clears throat> Um, was the main supplier of burlap in the region. Mm -hmm. um, and these bodies were found in burlap sacks. I mean, he could be in on it, too. <laughs> it's a giant conspiracy. It's a giant. It goes all the way to the top. All the way to the top. <laughs> Anyways. Okay. Let's see. So, there was some... Um Disturbing phone calls made to some of the victims' families after these girls went mm -hmm. missing. Um, so, Melissa's teenage sister, Amanda, had received a phone call uh, one week after she went missing. And the pho these phone calls were vulgar, and they were... 
he was mocking, and they said it was a guy, so mm -hmm. that's why we're just gonna say it was a guy because mm -hmm. the it's man, it's a man. So the the this man it's was insulting and mocking the victim, um, was making sexual comments to her, telling her that her sister was a, a slut and a whore. Uh, these calls lasted for five weeks. Like he repeatedly called this this girl. Why didn't they pull phone records? Phone records. Like I like that is the one thing that I didn't find. Like yes, they pinged the phone. Um, yeah. But and like like there was another. Um, okay, so it says here. It says that Melissa's mother said that there were a lot of calls that were made mm -hmm. to Manorville. Which is where John Bitroff yeah. was from. Which he's the one who was the convicted killer of the two sex workers. Like, I just don't understand why. See, but didn't... that's another reason that it makes me think that it was somebody involved in law enforcement. Because the calls all came from public places. Like, mm -hmm. they were on Melissa's phone, but it, they were mm -hmm. calling from, like, the train station. And other areas where there was a lot of people. Which is smart because if they trace the calls if any if there's any witnesses around there mm -hmm. you know there's, right. oh, there's gonna be a lot you of fucking people on the phone you're yeah. not gonna know who was on the phone right. making exactly. these phone calls like if it came from a private residence the police would have a lot easier time right finding but out who from, that was you call from madison square garden yeah. and yeah you're not gonna fucking know right. there's thousands of fucking people there every day like yeah i'm not gonna know um, also, Melissa and Melissa's mother said that this person didn't have a New York accent. Mm -hmm. So, that, and, yeah. that leads me to believe that they were not from New York. This, the murderer is not from mm -hmm. New York, either lives there part-time or has moved there, you know, later in their life yeah. or works there and, like, lives in New Jersey or something or, I don't know. No, I yes, I agree with you because the Long Island uh, native person has a very distinct yeah. accent. Yeah, like <laughs> hearing them New say York the name accent. Ashley is like, please stop, Ashley. No, like that. Ashley, Ashley, <laughs> Ashley. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> We're not making fun of New Yorkers. No. Uh, it's just funny because they make fun of it. Like, I just remember growing up, like, my New York friends would make fun yeah. of my country accent. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't have a country accent. And they're say, they're like, how do you say hot, hot dog? And I'm like, I say hot dog. And they're like, you say hot dog. <laughs> <laughs> See, people that are from, like, live in Virginia and they're mm -hmm. from Virginia, we swear up and down we don't have accents. Yeah. Like, we're the only state that doesn't have a fucking accent. But... I think that there are some people that do have accents. If I'm around Shelly too much, yeah. I start talking real country. Because <laughs> she, talk, she talks yeah. country. Yeah, she does. So anyway, I kind of agree with Ashley's theory here. There's definitely multiple people involved in these murders. I mean, it just goes back to Shannon saying, yeah. they're trying to kill me. They. Yeah. yeah. There's more than one person. And also, I know you said it was probably difficult for them to find Shannon because of whatever they didn't have the technology then but still that 23 minutes is how long she was on the 911 call mm -hmm. now either she was drugged and she was just not being helpful mm -hmm. on how to you know help them get to her right but well, i think then again to this day that 911 call has still never been released to the public oh right and the judge has ordered it twice twice to be released, not necessarily to yeah. the public, but to the courts, to the you courts, know? and then they would determine if it needs to be released to the public or yeah. anything. According to the police, it that it would impede their investigation. Yeah. While they originally said that um, Marsha or not Marsha, um, Shannon died from drowning in the marsh, but. Um, if it was a drowning, then what evidence is it going to be covering up? Yeah, she drowned, but she was naked when they found her. Her clothes were found right, like a mile away from her. So that doesn't make any sense. No. The police are, I do believe that the police are definitely covering this up mm -hmm. because I do believe that probably that James Burke guy yeah. 
is involved somehow. We're not saying that he's the murderer, but no, but he's involved. He knows more than what he's saying. He knows. Yeah. So. And they, I think that they did say that the call came in and I think that the police that night, I think that they just were overwhelmed with calls or something mm -hmm. like that and they couldn't mm -hmm. get out there until even yeah. then. Yeah. So that was like the, the police at least admitted that. I mean, I but, just feel like they need to release those calls because yes. it's just something's not right about that for them not to put up that much of a, I know it's an, an open investigation. But what is the harm of listening to a 911 call? Like, what harm is well, that going to do to the investigation? Because I guess it has to do with if there's something on that call, then if that's like what somebody's leads voice. them, if that leads them to arresting the person, like, it could just be, like, I don't even know what, I think it's, it's like that Delphi case. Like, they won't release any more of the video that was taken, that the girls took mm -hmm. of the killer. Um, but they won't because they're afraid that if they do, then it's going to hurt the actual prosecution. Yeah. Like they might potentially get off yeah. because if, if something was released to the public, then it, it I don't know. I don't yeah, know. I'm not a legal person. Okay. They have been coming out with more evidence recently. Like, what is this thing on here? It's just my oh. reminder. So, they have been coming out with recent evidence. Like we said, in 2017, they were able to determine one of the yeah. unidentified victims. Um, and then, just this last year, they I, they released pictures of a belt buckle mm -hmm. that they think belonged to the killer because it didn't belong to any mm -hmm. of the victims. And it has the <clears throat> letters, like, H-M written it's on it. It's either H-M or W-H. Yes. Mm -hmm. Depending on which way... You yeah. hold it. Mm -hmm. But there's, like, questions about that, too, because people, like, the lawyer for the, the Gilbert family, he's requested to see the actual belt, and the they won't police county, it. won't. they won't show it. All they show is the pictures. And he's like, I don't even think they have this fucking belt anymore. Like, yeah. The, the yeah. police are just being extra like, shady. Do they not this. have the belt because somebody stole it out of evidence? Maybe when he fucking got fired? Yeah, maybe. Mm, maybe. I mean, that's not his initials, so I don't know how that would make sense. But if it was maybe one of his other victims, you know, from a previous well, murder that's not been discovered yet. Yeah, but, like, um, you've got Hackett over here who's got the letter H. Like, maybe what's his middle name, you know? Yeah. Like, it could be him. Like, maybe he doesn't actually Peter go by Peter Hackett. I don't know. Maybe. Willie Hackett. Willie Hackett. <laughs> Peter Willie. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Maybe they call him Willie for sure. <laughs> Anyways, guys. Like, this so, is our case tonight. Yeah. It's, it's not solved. So. So, if you have any information about yeah. the list killer... Um, please contact your local law enforcement, um, and maybe I can put up a number for you. Can um, the Suffolk County Police Department? I don't know if you want to contact them or not, because maybe contact the FBI. Yeah, contact the FBI, because um, pretty sure that the Suffolk County Police is covering it up. Yeah. So, okay, this has been the Murder Buck Bag Show. You kill them, we grill them. Have a good week. Yep. Okay. Bye. Bye, guys. <laughs>